Throughout our everyday lives, we are surrounded by a wide variety of living organisms. We are in constant interaction with other forms of life besides human beings. Not just your pet dog or the squirrel in the park, but also those that we are not aware of. Good evening, my name is Marcia Warner, and I will be discussing the diversity among microorganisms. From the coldest areas of the Arctic to the edges of lava flows in the deepest ocean, microorganisms have managed to find a home and flourish in the most extreme environments. The three main points that will be discussed it are Basic knowledge about microorganisms. The different metabolic activities that have evolved over time. And finally, the different habitats and environments that they can survive in. First, I will share some information about microorganisms. A microorganism is defined as an organism that is so small that it is invisible to the unaided human eye. The si average size varies since each microorganism is categorized in different species. The average, for example, the average size for a bacteria cell is estimated to be about less than 1 to over 10 micrometers. While the average size of a virus is even smaller, ranging from 10 to 300 nanometers. To give a more concrete example on how small these organisms are, I will use this straight pen. Approximately 15,000 E. coli bacterial cells can fit on the tip of the straight pin, which is why the only way that these organisms can be observed is through a microscope, which I have on this poster board as a visual aid. According to the article Microbial Habitats, there are about 10 million species of microorganisms that live on Earth, while many more are still being discovered. With this numerous amount of diversity, it is not surprising that they are found in almost every habitat on Earth, which leads me to my next point. Microorganisms can survive in a wide variety of environments. They are able to thrive in environments from the very cold to the extremely hot. They can be categorized into four different groups based on the temperatures that they can survive in. The first one is psychrophiles. Psychrophiles are able to survive in very cold climates, ranging from 5 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Mesophiles are able to survive in temperatures that are very moderate ranging from 68 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. While you have thermophiles that can survive in temperatures ranging from 140 to 169 degrees Fahrenheit. And finally, you have hyperthermophiles, which can survive in extremely hot environments ranging from 170 degrees to 235 degrees Fahrenheit. They are also tolerant to many other conditions such as low water availability, high salt concentrations, and low oxygen levels. Along with the diversity of living conditions, Microorganisms also vary in their metabolic activity. Being one of the first organisms to live on Earth, they have adapted to the many 
climate changes that the planet has endured. One of these adaptations is the development of different metabolisms, which is the breakdown of nutrients to create energy. They can be separated into two groups, autotrophs, which are able to make their own food. And then there are heterotrophs that must consume food and get their food from other sources. Also, while some microorganisms need oxygen to fuel their metabolisms, others can process their metabolism in the absence of it by using other gases. There are even some that can alternate and thrive in both conditions. With all that said, are there any questions in the audience? Yes. Yes. Are all micro harmful to humans? Although it's true that there are a percentage of microbes that can cause diseases and illness, there are also organisms on Earth that live in your body. They're in your intestines, they're on your skin, they help process certain waste in the environment. So no, not all microbes are harmful to humans. Any more questions? I have one. Yay. Yes. What other gases can be used besides oxygen? Well, besides oxygen, microbes can also use nitrogen, sulfur, methane, and other forms of hydrogen. Are there any more questions on the floor? No. Well, in conclusion, our planet is home to a variety of unique life forms, including those that we are not able to see with the unaided eye. Among the many living organisms on Earth, microorganisms are one of the most diverse and abundant species on Earth. By providing some background information on microorganisms, the different metabolisms that are used to create energy, and the variety of habitats they can survive in, I have highlighted some of the few aspects to demonstrate their degree of diversity. So, the next time you marvel at the diversity of organisms that live on our planet, remember, there's always more to it that meets the eye. I'm very appreciative that each of you took out the time to come listen to my speech, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Woo! Awesome job!